Greetings yeah, and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Roll, Hit, Die presents our Friday night game of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, where Marcus will run us through whatever he his devious little mind feels like running us through. And we just throw it out the window and go do our own damn thing. Anyway, before we get into that, we, you'll notice we have a couple empty spots this evening. Uh, life has happened, of course, once again. And we'll they'll jump in when they get here if they can make it. But until then, we'll, we're here to entertain ourselves, at least. Uh, before you hand it off to Marcus, we can get started. Roll 20, of course, is uh, what we have as our maps and our setups here, as well as showing artwork and stuff to give us a little more immersion into the game and make it more fun for us and kind of give the viewers something to look at that they can uh, follow along. Our miniatures are created through Hero Forge. So if you've ever checked out Hero Forge, you can make your custom minis anywhere from miniature size up to like statuette size. And uh, give it your own pose abilities, equipment, gear, you name it. Give it a paint job as well. But if you're a subscriber, you can turn that mini into a digital version that you can use in your digital games at home. Also, uh, GUI Cube is our usual sponsor. We have a campaign, um, chapter four of the Red Star Rising campaign. In the books, ready to go, just waiting on scheduling uh, to pan out so that we can actually jump back into it. And when that happens, you will be the first to know. But until then, if you haven't had a chance to go check out GooeyCube.com, go give them a look-see. It's a 5th edition world created by one company and expanded on by the community. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to check them out, go check them out. Uh, down below, we have our link, which runs year-long. It's extra life. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to click on it, or if you have and you have the opportunity to do so again, click on it and give what you can to those uh, children, the Children's Miracle Network, as well as Children's Hospitals. And underneath that, we have a link for our website, RollHitDie.com, that Marcus has been working on. So if you have a chance, go check it out and see what kind of fun things Marcus has put in there. Uh, don't think, or I can't think of any other announcements that I have at this particular point in time, so I will just go ahead and hand it off to you, Marcus, so we can get started. Alrighty then. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcus Scott. I will be running this group of misfits to a homebrew version of Brian of the Frostmate. Why I say it's a homebrew version? Because we haven't followed the book since chapter one. Because, you know, who needs plot lines? Uh, so, if you're looking for any insight or uh, secrets or whatever for your own, you really won't find it here because 98% of this shit I made up. Uh, with that said, it is a homebrew, so any little, any, any rural lawyers out there, just so you know we're here to have fun. If it sounds funny or it's good for the moment, I'll more than likely let it slide, even if it's not supposed to. So, uh, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the chaos that we'll pursue. Uh, right now, I jump into character introductions, but uh, we got two that are gone. Uh, hopefully, they'll be able to join us later. So, we'll jump over to the other side and start with Typhoid. Since you already kind of met Dan, but he'll tell you about his character later. So, Kurt, what you got for us? I, my name is Curtis. I am playing a Leonan monk, Way of Mercy, Werebear, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. I can heal people. I don't do it often. I can hurt people. I do that often. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, on occasion. I... I you know, we tend to save creatures instead of people. It's interesting how that worked out, too. Yeah, I think we've saved, like, one person so far. And they've joined us. Mm-hmm. That might be the reason we saved them. <laughs> huh. <laughs> so we got to save that one because he's going to be part of the team. <laughs> what are you talking about? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't sound like us at all. Oh, no, at all. That makes me weary about the character I was going to bring in the second half of this campaign. As long as they're a creature. So, uh, 
and not speaking, a person. <laughs> speaking of weird creatures and people, uh, my character that I'm currently running in this campaign is uh, Stoneclaw, Largo Stoneclaw, who is a Goliath. Started out as a bard and has picked up sorcery since then for whatever particular reason he decided to. I, I still haven't really figured out if there was a good reason for it or not, but that might have something to do with the fact that his mind had been screwed with over time by illithids. Uh, you know, before he actually figured out who he really was, he seemed to be a pretty nice guy. In fact, to the point that he rescued a Yeti Tite, which is the creature that he carries on his shoulder. Who looks like a gnome with a goblin mask and apparently is the smartest party member we have. And I'm not joking. He is the smartest one in the group. And that's... that's it's all the chaos. And that's, that's us. Of course, we, uh, uh, Marcus, will let you know who we're missing. Yes, uh, we have Lorena Moonflower, which is our roguelock? Yes. Rolic? Yes. Who's a roguelock? Okay. Uh, former assassin trying to turn over a new leaf to make a life for her and her significant other. Who she did find and out was really interested it wasn't just a ploy by the family yeah uh and then the gentleman they rescued a few episodes ago Perry Wonderbeer a cleric who is out to end this frozen mayhem from Ariel uh since he outranked their lovable portal cleric he was sent back to the city to give an update as he went on with this group uh so with that all said and done which one of y'all would like to do the recap i'd say it'd probably have to be the one that actually takes notes i take notes you take better notes than i do <laughs> i miss things a lot uh, i missed a few things last session because you know that happens. Uh, let me double check. All right, so last session, two weeks ago, I think. Yes, it was. Uh, we took a short rest is how we started. So mm -hmm. after that, we continued to make our way through the runes, and we came across some shadows that attacked us and then got obliterated by holy magic. And then we ran into some vampire kobolds that attacked us and then got obliterated by force. Uh, then, yeah, as we continued on, we encountered a creature, a sh another shadowy creature, but this one was named. Their name was, uh, Drakarth. Close enough. Uh, they were a wraith who, uh, were trying to talk to us in an ancient elven tongue called the Rose, but Lorena was only the only one that could really understand it. And, uh, with a deep sigh and a voice steeped in malevolence and hatred, it whispered to us, which only one of us could understand. Cursed be those who gaze upon the horror of that Drakarth has become. Such promise wasted, lost in this cold sepulcher. That's a word. Uh, where, uh, where were centuries ago, or where were you centuries ago, um, when he was in his prime of his life, uh, where were you when my the daddy's frigid, eyes. yeah, where were you in the frigid darkness consumed him? You are no good to Drakarth now. Nothing remains of him but his frozen bones, ancient treasures, and me. And he attacked us. And as we were fighting him, uh, he eventually retreated into an ice pillar. And we thought, well, you know, nothing ever comes from you know, things hiding and running away. So we went to the pillar, destroyed it, and found a body. The body had a shuttle and staff of Charming, which may or may not have been cursed after Pear uh, tuned to it and became kind of a different person. And a mantle of the spell resistance. We continued deeper and saw a what was could only be described as a Lovecraftian horror that poked at our minds as we went by it, uh, it was kind of 
strange and weird and something we couldn't comprehend as Lovecraftian horrors tend to be. Uh, so we just went on our way, ignored that, pretended it didn't exist. Uh, we went to a couple of dead ends and then we eventually found a, I can't recall what it looked like, but it was this mound, this rock, let's call it that. And then it slapped me right in the face. Well, you know, the rocks are tend to do. Yep, it turns out it was a spitting mimic. So after attacking it and getting stuck in it and fighting it and killing it, um, we talked about setting up camp there and pushing for or pushing forward, and we decided, you know what, let's just clear out that other hallway and then we'll set up for camp. As we approached, we heard this little thunking in the next room, and there was this mummy, and it's like, great, now we have to fight a mummy. Wait. It was trapped behind a wall of ice. And it was trying to get out. So we did the correct thing and we ignored it and just walked away. Nothing we found a the wrong could happen with that. Yeah, yeah, we just leave a mummy behind us trapped behind a wall of ice. So in the next room, Largo recognized that he had seen this through his arcane eye previously. And uh it was a room with trees and purple pears and a dryad approached us named uh, Hathawin who offered us a place to rest and pears to eat after questioning to see if it was safe to eat and that we could actually eat these and go on our free will because it was very confusing whether we should stay or go we decided you know what we're going to take a nice rest here have these pairs, and then be on our way after our rest. Uh, so we learned that, yeah, these pears are safe to eat. We can go if we do all, if we rest. And those of us who ate the pears got some charms. Largol and myself got a charm of third level cure wounds plus wisdom modifier. And then Lorena got a charm of druidcraft. And we decided, you know what? This is a good enough place to rest. She says that... Uh, there hasn't been any other creatures passed through here because you had seen some drow in the area. So as we were set down to rest, about four hours go by, and those of us who didn't need two hours are feeling great. Like we got a long rest in half the time. Alrighty. And that Big number. Point... Big number. Tough. When Tough. you use this reward, you may reduce the damage taken from a non-magical attack by three points. <laughs> okay. I just realized how useless that is to me. What did you get? Tough. Oh. Reduces non-magical attacks damage by three points. That's, you know, that the werewolf doesn't take anyway. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. can't take non-magical damage, so... Mm-hmm. Alrighty. So let's dive right on in. Yay. As y'all are stirring from your rest, those that ate the fruit... Which I think was just three of the four, right? Aaron did not. Okay. I yeah, because that's what gave us the uh, the charm. Mm -hmm. charm or whatever. Yep. Go ahead and y'all give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, I am wonderful at these, sort of. Okay. This dice. That'll be you said wisdom. Mm -hmm. oh, this is Largo. Well, Largo doesn't have any wisdom. So that's going to be a 16. Okay. So I rolled a 2 last time. This time I rolled a 3. So that's now we did get... This is, this is after 4 hours and a long rest, right? Right. You did yes. get your long rest. Alright, so that puts me at... Alright, I went... I need 4 more hours. Okay. And Lorena rolls a 24. So you had a 16 and... I had an 8. All right. As y'all awake from this most restful sleep, you had the 
most wonderful dream that just almost brought you to tears on how beautiful it was. And although you know there's a mission going on, you just really don't want to leave this grove. It's so peaceful. It's a great place for me to finish reading this book of mine. I guess. You know what? I'm thinking that exact same longer. thing. Everywhere we've gone so far has just been miserably cold, bitter, and terrible. The bad part is, the one who probably could have stopped all this isn't here right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those yeah. pears are good, and yeah, we haven't had, you know, run into anything nasty here. No, not yet. Not that I know of. So I'll just I mean, lean back against a tree and crack open the book and continue reading. Ah, you know, those... I mean, there's that mummy back there, but I don't think we have to worry about him. He seems yeah. like... If he would have broke out, he would have broke out a long time ago, you know? Yeah, don't worry about him. If he shows up, we'll take care of him then. But I don't know. I just get a feeling that... Man, you gotta worry about something like that here. No, no, no. I mean... So this is yeah. where we're going for the next five hours till they show up. <laughs> I mean, I got a book to read. Yeah, I'm, and I, I'm, I've cracked up in the book. Um, probably got a nice little pipe or something else that I'm smoking. Uh, I mean, I'm not immune to charm effects. No, I'm not either. Not this character. Unless, <laughs> unless I am charmed. Yeah, it'd be considered a charm, yes. That's a hell of a DC, oh. though. It's, uh, 17's a DC. Okay. So, so uh, well, Wampus didn't need anything. But I'm okay. a 19 for his anyway. Was this eating something or spending the night in the grove? Yeah, what spending the night in the grove. Okay. Okay. And, well, eating and spending the night. So it's a combination of both. Alrighty. Um, um, I feel I have some monk bullshit that I will bring up here after a while of reading. Uh, stillness of mind. Yes, yes, yes. Where I believe I can end a charmed or frightened effect. Yep. But I think I need to read this book for a little while. You know, he's got a good idea, and it's nice and relaxful and peaceful here. And if I feel like, you know what, we should probably get headed on, and I, mean, I usually really don't feel like doing that. Anyway. It's only been, what, maybe four hours-ish, I think. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's just kind of hang out. I mean, really, this book is still kind of slow. I mean... But yeah, I'll spend the next four hours unless something happens reading. Okay. And get my well, book finished. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I can, you know, spend a little bit of downtime, you know? It's nice to have downtime. Okay. Uh, well, as y'all get up, relax, we ain't got nowhere good to go and start reading your book. You have Perrin and... Lorena, looking at you, going, guys, um, we need to go. Uh, we usually Why? take an hour, eight hour rest. We can stick here a little longer. It's nothing, look, I mean, there's nothing messing with us. Just, just chill. Did, we, we already to took get... care of Oral. You know, she's gone. We have the uh, all the time in the world to search for this place. We can always get to it later. Uh, insight. Uh, I mean, if you're asking for an insight roll, I'm not giving you one. No, <laughs> my nose is buried in a book. I'm not really inciting anybody right now. Yeah, um, you know. and plus, we only have a certain amount of time to read these books to begin with, so yeah, we wait a long read. Give me work. persuasion checks. I um, am terrible at those, I will do so. Do we want to, since we're both trying to persuade, have one of us make it uh, do it with an advantage? Sure. Yeah, I will give you advantage. That's why I was asking. Because <laughs> mine's a uh, modifier of null. All right. That's, that fucking sucks. Uh, that's going to be a 17. For giggles, okay. let's find out. Yeah, no. <laughs> I rolled a 10 and a 4. I looked and I... For giggles, I threw mine, and it would have been less by a mile. 
Okay. Lorena is like, fine, fine. But uh, Perrin, he ain't having it. What's this stuff do again? Well, Perrin's being a bit of a dick right now, and he's real demanding. Like, we gotta do this. I'm like, come on, Perrin, just chill. Here, I'll roll him up. <laughs> Smoke some other pipe. It'll chill you out a little. Oh, do I have anything in my bag? I think I have the mushrooms on another character. I do have the mushrooms on another character. <laughs> but I thought I just don't them. understand. We have to go. This grove is not safe. She oh, has brainwashed. Been the safest place we've been so far in this place. I mean, no. we actually got a full night's sleep. Didn't have to worry about anything coming up behind us and attacking us. Uh, I mean, you just don't know how to relax, brother. I'm just saying. You, you need to learn how to relax a little. As y'all are talking, you see her yeah. kind of... Did, did you try to charm us, sir? Yeah, Hathawin, the, the dry... No, nah, nah, not dryer. Uh, dryad. Dryad. Yeah. Did yeah. you try to charm us to keep us here or something? Uh, no. You guys are free to stay here as long as you like. You do see her trying to somewhat casts a spell on Perrin, but it fails. Now, what was that? I've seen them do stuff like that before. Is that more magic stuff? Oh, I was just trying to get him to chill out. And I that a is... a so-called calm nurse. It might work. I don't know if that's what you're trying to use or not. Uh, if you want to do uh, insights on her... Yes. Not me. No. I'm busy reading. That that's a thirteen at best. I have to find the character sheet. I, I rolled a five plus eight thirteen. Okay. I, I'm just half heartedly paying attention. Well, you paid attention enough to realize that she's full of shit because I rolled an eight. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, that she has cast some kind of spell on y'all. Oh. Close my book with a loud clap. Well, Argo, slap myself in the face. <clears throat> Why'd you do that, dear? Because you cast a spell on us and you charmed at least a couple of us, it seems like. Largo, uh, I what? believe what? she did charm us. So? To stay here against our will. I'm, uh, nobody's holding me here against my will. I'm sitting here reading my book. Oh. So, Perrin, we, we Lorena, how did these spells hour. work? <laughs> we usually take an eight-hour rest. I figured, you know, I could spend four more hours reading. It's a nice, quiet, peaceful place. Uh, does he uh, have it? He's got some stuff, but I won't burn through it if you don't have to. Uh, Perrin, how do you normally break those types of spells? He goes over, puts his hand on uh, Largo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. consent, brother. Really consent. Lesser restoration. Does that clear, Trump? Uh, uh, one condition. So It's poison. Does it? Oh, no, you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah. It would have to be like dispel magic, I think. Okay, that's what that, you cast then. Or something to break the spell, like whether you have to hit him or hit her. He cast uh, dispel magic. He cast dispel magic. What level me? is the spell that she uses to charm um, people? Yeah, that's right. Dispel magic, though, is a fourth level spell. Yeah, to begin but with. if it's a higher than a fourth level right. casting, then you got to roll a dice to. Uh, it's just an innate ability of hers. Well, so uh, let me check out charm. What's the spell? Yeah, what's the spell, basically? Is it charm person or yeah. dominate? Because uh, charm person, person. Is, that's only like a second or third level spell. But to cast it against all of us, it probably would have to be at least fifth. Well, they don't have get... a... Well, let's see. When casting a spell... Uh, yeah, you can choose at any level higher than first level or second level. You can choose an extra person. So, how many people was it cast on at the time? 
Just you. I mean, you're the only one that's left. Yeah, but oh, you're talking about the charm. Yeah, yeah. So there's four of us. So that would have had to been at least a fourth level spell to get four of us. Well, uh, technically three, because y'all. It's a combination of eating the fruit and sleeping in the grove. Gotcha. It's sort of a layer. Type. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. So. Fourth for fourth or third for fourth. It was uh, get rid of it anyway. So yeah. if you're yeah, if you cast a spell, then I, I'm assuming uh, it's a higher level than a third level spell. So. Yeah, we'll just say it works. I don't want to burn his high level spells, but before I kill you all. Yeah. Well, you feeling better? I mean, I felt just fine. This is a tad bit disappointing. I, uh, you know, maybe next time. You could just try and persuade people and not charm them into staying. I would never. Y'all agreed to stay. Anyway, I think we should get headed on our way initially, the way we were going. Yeah, but I only need uh, four more hours. How many more hours do you need to read that book before you run out? How many more days we got left? Uh, so I started reading mine back then and we were two days in, this is the third day. So I have, I'm halfway through my allotted hours and I need 18 more. Okay. So I, I've got plenty of time. Um, and... I got three days to read 18 hours, so I could skip long rests and be fine. Cause I just need short rests to get everything back except for hit points and, uh, uh, the hit dice. Fine, fine. I guess we'll leave. Thanks for having us in your grove, even though you charmed us to stick around. Props on that, too, by the way. Thanks for the food, though. Well, as y'all start to walk away, I need strength checks, because you see her start to Cast a spell saying y'all aren't going to leave. Counter spell. If... Okay. Let me see. Where is it? Counter spell is a third level? Uh, uh, yeah, it's initially a third. It takes it. Cancels out the spell. And uh, her friendly demeanor has gone. Now, let's, to... let's not. We're leaving on friendly terms, and you know, maybe I can back and visit, so. Let's not turn this into something you're going to regret. I'm just saying. Oops. I see that there's at least one of you, but there is five of us. And I love this grove, and I'd hate to burn it. I really would. It's a beautiful grove, and I'd hate to burn it to the ground. You know, okay. normally we don't like people, but we tolerate, you know, things that aren't, you know, just humanoids. Okay. We can go this route if you want. Give uh, Largo give him persuasion with advantage because you two are talking. <laughs> <laughs> natural 20 for a 27. She got a natural 20 for a 22. <laughs> <Okay>. So, <laughs> so her. Vicious Mina kind of calms down. You promise you'll come back? Do you know sending? Uh, actually, she does not know sending. I don't think I know it either. And we don't have any paper birds because that's a water deep deal. Uh, I'm sure you can buy them outside, but I think they're way more common there. So, yes. Uh, yeah, I'll come back. No problem. Just, you know, stay safe. There's a lot of stupid, nasty creatures in this cave. And, uh, oh, this is my I'll grove. Do a, I could... do, call me. <laughs> well, you would have to come back this way. The, well, the only way out. You could go the other direction because I remember it's coming in from the other way with the. Uh, never mind. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Well, then I will see you soon. Do you need fruit to go with? Uh, I think we're good right now. Yeah, I'll take one. All right. <laughs> take whichever I one she has. 
Okay. Uh, she hands you four of the uh, fruits. These are a little different color. Um, basically, these are good berries on steroids. Oh, okay. Good berries I will write that steroids. down. Four good berries on steroids. Yes. Uh, so you, if you eat these in the uh, next 24 hours, they will give you 10 hit points instead of the one. Just good berries. Yep. What good can they be? It's yeah. It's all. They're only food. Yeah. All right. I'll go ahead and you know take one now because of course why not. Okay. Take one now. Is it temporary hit points. No. 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 I figured you know, it's breakfast. I'll eat it now. Oh. Okay. I was gonna say it gives you hit points. We don't need any at the moment. That restores your hit points to I, 10. I don't know that's what these do. Mm. Uh, okay. okay. That's right. You feel a warmth glow over you. It's like, oh, dear, you shouldn't have eaten that now. Oh, why not? So now you're mine. <laughs> these help restore your vitality. Oh. I thought it was like breakfast. No. And she'll reach up and grab another from her tree and hand it to you. Appreciate it. Now these are only good for next day or so. Oh, good. Maybe before the end of that time period, we'll come back by and get some more from you. Feel free to come by anytime. As we walk off, uh, Largo says, I've never been with a dryad. Uh, it might be interesting. Well, you did see what she looked like, right? Uh, I think you showed it to us, yes. Yeah. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, which way were we going to head out? I see I see. there's a way that looks like there's down oh, south, maybe. Move her off the screen. Yeah, because there is... The map. Uh, I came from somewhere over to the southwest, I suppose, of the map. But I'm seeing a lot yeah. of offshoots. I didn't go very well, much further from here because I went up. And I think that's what I thought I ran into where you had already been. Yeah, yeah. This is all unknown territory to me. Um, well, I know uh, that if we go back that direction, and he's pointing towards the southeast, or well, southwest, that there was like some sort of structure with drow around it. Didn't you also say there are some uh, rimeres floating around in a Yeah, puddle? I think they were further in than that, though. Okay. So, uh, so there's a black wall. Way. Yeah, there's a black wall right here. Yeah, there's a way around the wall. Okay, I was just... For some odd reason, the, uh, the, the lighting is actually sh showing a actual wall where there is no wall. Yeah, that's why I was making sure there wasn't a wall there, because when I slid my token. Yeah, because uh, I was just looking, it's yeah, like there's a way right up. Here, there's no actual wall there, if you yeah. took it around. Yeah, and there's no nothing there on the dynamic lighting either. Oh, weird. <laughs> All right, cool. So, yeah, there, it looks like there's a way up here, uh, maybe something down here. Well, she did tell you guys that uh, exit is this way. Well, do we want? To, I guess we, we skip those creatures and don't worry about them. We can go to the exit. Cause that's what we're trying to find, right? Yeah, yeah. It's totally up to you, Lorena. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> you decide. Walking around and looking at all those exits, I stop. Wampus. Now's not the time to pretend to be Laura. <laughs> oh, I good will stuff. jolly good. Shush everyone real quick, and then point. Because I I was just moving my token around, looking in this area, and my vision showed me something. 
where you point to. And I will point in this area, in this entrance, and mm -hmm. say I saw something quietly to everybody away from that entrance. All right. You want to deal with it? Fuck, are they? I don't know. I can't tell because I'm so far zoomed out, I can't see the picture. <laughs> well, looking at it, it's this big old green eyed motherfucking thing. It's a one eyed demon looking creature. What are those? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. That is what is down there. Well, we could just go on out the way she pointed, but I figured I'd let you know that I saw those things. Well, I mean, we yeah. can clear out the vermin, I suppose, if, you know, they don't mess with the grove. Yeah, is she still floating around? Yeah. What are those? Oh, those are some foul, foul creatures. You want us to remove those for you? Oh, if you want to remove them and anything else you find in this cave, it will help me spread my grove. Yeah, because um, that's what we're about. It's help me spread your grove. All right, so. <laughs> Read something, Is huh? that so? <laughs> Leaves of green. <laughs> Red, Red roses. roses. <laughs> All right, so y'all are going to. Seeing them bloom, huh? Um, there you go. You cleared the order. Good for you. Y'all go ahead and roll. I will be right back. All no, righty. Go anywhere. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, that's. Uh... Hey, that's even better than I rolled. Or, uh, even better than I rolled on roll 20. Oh, I just, when it comes out of initiative, since he's going to put it in the tracker, I just go, I just go roll the digital. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, well, it's 8.40. Uh, I was kind of hoping one of them or both of them would get on here shortly. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, but whatever these Nothic things are. I don't think I've ever even faced a Nothic in any of my games. It is a large green-eyed thing. That's all I know. Yep, it's almost a, a mnemonic of some sort. It's weird that they're in this fallen tower, so maybe they're a creation, like we saw earlier? That's a possibility, because there was, like I said, right around the corner, not too far from here, is the drow. Yep. Alright, so we got our initiatives rolled. And you're muted. Yep. Alright, I'm pulling up the other two. And then pull these guys to finish. Okay. Hey, Floyd. You are up. The ball's in your court, brother. You I wouldn't like fear so. Hey, I can get right on in there because monk, monk bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> What, get in there and realize there's four? Sure, let's go with that. Uh, so, oh, yeah, you see me run know. in, look to the right, and I see these four, look to the left, and then just look back to the right, shaking my head like, son of a bitch. <laughs> well, you know you can stop, you gotta run the whole way. Uh, but I have my mindset on this one. Okay. I saw this one to begin with. 
Okay. So. Once go. All on this bottom guy that I'm right next to. That one right there? Okay. Uh, that one's cocked. Sure it is. Same roll. All right. Uh, well, it is a 14 leaning oh. against a d10, so I rerolled it. Got a 14. But here's the question. Does a 4 plus 8 hit? 12. Four, 12 does not hit. Okay, so one attack misses. 22? 22 hits. And then a natural 20. That misses. Shame. So... That's going to be at least 24 points of damage to begin with. Okay. And then add another four, so 28 points of damage. Okay. 38 points of damage. And for then it goes up to, from 38, add five more to that. So 43 total. Okay. Yep, that's my movement in there, because I like making bad decisions, it appears. Okay. Now, you know, any of our viewers out there want to assist him in making sure he doesn't have a problem, you can always send those points that Marcus neglected to point out this time. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. How's this one looking that's in, that I just attacked after taking, what was that, 43? He feels bruised. Shit. <laughs> Largol, hit me. Um, hit you. Why would I hit you? Explosions. Huh? Explosions. Oh, gotcha. Nah, it's up to you. Do what you want. Uh, you got evasion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But like, All right. This one comes up behind you, spins you around, and just stares at you. Uh, up. Get, huh? What's up? What's <laughs> up? Give me a constitution save. 17. Ah, ugh. Uh, maybe not. 17, huh? Eh. No, that's an 11. Alrighty. You take 17 points of necrotic damage as it gazes into your eyes. Okay. Taken. Uh, that's his turn. You get spun around again. Okay. By this guy. Can't say it. Nope. Still no. Okay. That, that was a 12. <laughs> All right. Hey, I might actually be doing you some damage. This time you take 21 points of necrotic. Gotcha. Oh, nice knowing you. I know, right? It was your idea. I want you to remember that, by the way. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think these things were going to hurt that bad. <laughs> okay. That's his turn. Largo, you're up. Yep. All right, so my go. There we go. So let's go ahead and do some shifting around. What you drop in here? Uh, I mean, come on now. I'm a spellcaster. What do you think I'm dropping? Uh, Everything in that room. Uh, okay. You know what? I'm going to spend a sorcery point. To transmute that uh, from fire to thunder, since nothing seems to have a resistance to thunder that I know of. Okay. So I'm pretty much casting a thunderball in there. Alrighty. Um, where, oh, I gotta scroll back down to it. One. And I'm One, casting two, it at three. 
fifth level, so it's going to be 10d6. Five. Six. One more. Seven. Alrighty. What's DC? 15. Alright. Three actually save. Make that four. I saved. Okay. I rolled a 12 for a 20. Thirty-one points of thunder damage. Thirty-one points of thunder damage. Alright. Of course, save makes half. I've got a... All right. Right side for you, the knuff that she hit. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look too happy. He's a little bit beyond bruised. A little bit beyond bruised, okay. (laughs) So after 43 plus a minimum of 15, he's looking a little bit more than bruised. Well, he failed, so... So, uh, eh, 74. Yeah. He's... Bleeding out his ears and nose. And... But he's still just a little bruised. He's not bloody yet. No, he's bloody. Oh. Four. This guy did not like... Oh. Mind uh, you, that's just a marker so that I can see the map for the stream as well as my placement for the fireball. It's not actually Wampus' location. Oh, yeah. He's heading out towards... I was about to move them all. I was like, oh, wait, no, that's the only one. It's not thick. Oh. Does a 14 and a 12 hit you there, Typhoid? They just miss. Just miss. Yeah. Just oh, miss. Just miss by a four or five. Mm-hmm. 14 missed by seven. Oh, shite. Her niche didn't go through. She's fine. She can always come in later. Yeah, see, she's at the top of the round. She'll be in here next time. Yeah. Well, I'll have her go this round, or right after this. So, 5, 10, 15. Um. All right. So she'll toss out her dancing sword as a bonus. So. Um, so that is 17. That hit. So this is 11 points of damage. Sword and uh, 
14. Okay. Behind you, you hear a thump as the Nothic behind you gets beaten. All right. This high level spells. It's got cantrips. Yeah, but his cantrips don't heal <laughs> you. Oh, no, know. That's fine. I'm fine. I'm bent. Alright. So. That will. On save. Oh, that definitely fails. Oh. Okay. This one here is looking rough too. Okay. Rock ball. Okay. Actually, you're up. Uh, let's go ahead and get one attack of opportunity from this guy as okay. I move out of the space. Boop. And this guy? So two oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. 12, 23. Hits. Five non-magical slashing. Okay. Now, I want every single one of them that's in here so I, yeah not that guy he's out of here so not this one but the rest of them I need a constitution saving throw as my eyes light up and I fire my laser 17 Go to gold 4 fail 14 fail 9 fail 4 6 yeah, I might have made it 17 so, makes it. All right. What damage? Cold. Well, how much damage? Okay. The ones that failed will take 38 points of damage. And success, 19. So 38 to the ones that failed. As I make icicles out of them. They become a frozen statue. I will move back into this position. Now I need a DC 16 wisdom saving throw. As I let out a daunting roar on the two that are within me. Two okay. next within you? Not within me, but yeah, okay. DC 16 wisdom. Jeez, how close you get to them, man? Yeah, yeah. Two, three. Failed. They are frightened until they end or start of my next turn until end of my next turn they are frightened okay. and that's my action and my bonus okay. 
They're frightened of you, correct? Yes, they are frightened. And 15, 20. You want your attack of opportunity? Uh, he doesn't have to flee. Oh, he doesn't? No, the, he, he just has the frightened condition. Which means he can't. I don't. Disadvantage on attacks, and he does have to move from you, doesn't he? Unless he's feared. Uh, he can't willingly move closer to me. But yeah, he has disadvantage on attacks and ability uh, ability checks and attack rolls, at, with if I am within line of sight, and he can't move closer. So, if he wanted to get away from me, he would. He couldn't just run past. He'd have to. Do, do, do that yeah, that's what i was doing yeah so he can run away if he wants but he can't get close he could stay where he's at he could run away and uh yeah if he's um, gonna run away then i will go ahead and take an attack of opportunity okay and i'm going to double check something real quick uh, whoops that's why i'm at a bonus action Well, let's see if I even hit first. 17? Yes. Okay. So this is up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking to use my... Uh, where the fuck is it? Uh, oh. My uh, uh, hand of harm. Because I can use a key point to inflict damage. It's just on an unarmed attack. Could I do that outside of my normal attack action since this is just a reaction attack? It's still an unarmed attack. Is it they require a bonus action or anything or is it just something you can pop your key point into? I can just add it for, you know, extra damage. Okay, yeah, you can do that. Okie dokie. So that's going to be this little thing. That's terrible. Seven points of slashing plus six points of necrotic. And he's poisoned. Are you sure it's six points? Is it? Let's say seven. <clears throat> <clears throat> what? Thought you said seven. I'm sorry. No, oh, well, we'll just leave it. <laughs> One freaking point, man. Really? Okay. This guy. Boop. 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 Hi. One, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. 30. Uh, go on, save. Who? Uh, Perrin. 19, he saves. Okay. Nothing kind of turns him around and starts staring at his eyes, and he just goes, Bloop. Look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. No, fuck you, punk. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, Arlo, you're up. Uh, I don't know how many are in there with him, but I do see that three of them are... Do I see three of them are dead? Let me see. Uh, two. I see two are dead. Well, there's three dead, but I only see that two are. Oh, yeah, I thought you so meant how many you see. There's that one, that one, this one. Uh, uh, I think I'll just move right here behind him. Pull out that okay. nice fancy axe I've got. And with advantage, attack this fellow from behind with booming blade. Okay. Actually, no, he's got a guy next to him, so I'm going to do a flame blade, green flame. Okay. So, first things first, I miss miserably because I'm sure that a 13 does not hit. It does not. And uh, I will say, apparently I suck at this, and uh, but you can do better than I can, Lorena, and give her bardic inspiration. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot to put her back where she's supposed to be. Eh, she's fine. Uh, well, yeah. actually... Does uh, Perrin, would Perrin like to be moved out of the position he's currently in? Yes, please. All right. Well, before my turn is completely up, I will side shift just enough to where I'm still within range. And I mm -hmm. will push him five feet to here. And since I'm moving him, it's an involuntary movement, pretty much. He there's, does not provoke attack of opportunity. Okay. And that will be it for my turn. Uh, disregard the bardic inspiration, though. Okay. Because um, to, to do what I just did to him, I required that uh, bonus. So. The bonus action. Yeah. yeah. Okay, those guys are dead. Um, Lorena, 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 Lorena. Okay. You, oh, yes, she has advantage on this. And she has advantage on this. Yeah, I figured my positioning would give her advantage on the attack for the one guy there next to us. Okay. And this was... So, we are looking at 21, 38. Okay. As this one kind of turns towards you and snarls, then gurgles, and then drops. All right. Mm -hmm. Perrin, what are you going to do? Let's see. Hit him with con again. 15, that fails. So that ends. Uh, oh, that's only nine points of damage. Yeah. All right. Mm. Three people. Mm. Dan, pick a number one, two, or three. One. And of course, I roll a four. Uh, okay. You know you can type in. Roll, just, you know you can type in roll uh, roll one d three, right? One d three. Yeah, I already had the dice thing come up. Um, he's gonna say, "Look into my eyes." You gonna buy me a drink first? That'll be a nineteen. Con save. When you say you gotta buy me a drink first, he looks at you like, huh? Yeah, I mean, you don't try to seduce a man without buying him a drink first, no matter what, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thankfully. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, because, of course, why not? I'm just gonna run up to this one that's under H37. Okay. And this time I'm gonna make three at H. Age, yeah. Uh, three attacks, but I'm going to use a key point for Flurry of Blows. Okay. Three is going to miss, because that's only an 11, but the 20 and 21 will hit. Okay. So...
24 <laughs> points of damage. Okay. And the last thing I do on that is I heal myself. Okay. You gotta double check I did the right thing. But, yep, that's me. Okay. And I oh, healed myself one... for, I think, just eight. Uh, that nothing is bloody. That one's dead. That one's dead. Actually, no, 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 no. You, Lorena, here. There. She's gonna come down here. Was her dancing sword into making any attacks, or is she just dancing around? Oh yeah, can she move that? <laughs> yeah, bonus uh, action. Yeah, As a bonus action, she can be moved around. Okay. Um. Like, damn it, Lorena, you're throwing your sword out there to dance. You ain't even freaking using it. What the hell? Honestly, I forgot. I know. Okay. That's why I was trying to help remind you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, 25, 15, that's 40. Yeah. Okay. Bonus action. How far can I move that? 10 feet? Uh, it's on her sheet, I couldn't tell you. Give me a second, I can look up the dancing sword for you. See if it's yeah, uh, 30 feet. Okay. 30 feet, yeah, okay. Yeah, 10 yeah. feet didn't sound quite right. I thought it was, it was something like spiritual weapons. Okay. Okay, that hits four, eight points of damage. Oops, I did not mean to move you. Pretty ass right there, thank you. Uh, okay. All right. Now that one's dead. All right. Largo. Uh, let me see. Do I even see the other two? Where you're at? Probably no, I, not. I have no idea there's any others. Uh, so... You couldn't have seen them when you were here? Uh, I might have seen one. Yeah, I would have been able to see the one. if. Uh, so we'll say, uh, we'll say I did, I guess. Okay. Oh, these bodies aren't here anymore, so why am I doing it that way? And... So, okay, well... Best I could probably do is get to right about here. Due to okay. moving through her space and crossing over bodies. Okay. So, neither one of these look like they've been touched? Uh, they both look pretty bad beat up. This one more so than the other. A couple right. of statues Let's behind see. me. Uh, I'll just fire a firebolt at the one that he is not in combat with. Okay. And that is going to be a miss. That's only going to be a 10. Okay. Uh, do you want any movement? Up to you. Do you want to try and move me? Well, I mean, I can. It's, you just fail to save. I'm fine with moving. It's up to you. All right, well, I'll yank you back five feet. So you can come up diagonally towards me if you want to. There you go. And that'll be it. My turn. All right. He's a statue. He's dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On save. 17, what's his say? 19. Okay. 
Oh, that is... Okay. The one to the bottom right of you is barely hanging alive. It's barely standing up. And that one's dead. So Typhlet, you're up. All right. Uh, I'll make my first attack against this one. 14. Uh... Just misses. Second attack. Misses. Third attack. Misses. During the flurry of blows, I had other my other plans, but let's go with the fourth attack. Miss. Jeez. Four, three, one, one. Okay. Yeah. Anything so else I, you want to do? I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna move uh, a smidge and be very annoyed. Okay. I'm gonna get in between these two to try and get them to attack me. <laughs> it's me. Okay. Well, since this guy apparently I did not put in the rotation, he just been there getting his ass kicked. He'll go on this roll. Claw. Claw. 18 hit you? Nope. All right. Both miss. Lorena. With the blade. That's a blade. Twenty. So that's seven points of damage. Dead. All right, Largo. <sighs> okay, I will step down to here. Okay. First, just to see. Give me a strength saving throw. Team. Huh? 18. 18's what you're old? Yep. Uh, okay, well, he makes the save. So then I will just go ahead and move up right up on him then. Oh, okay. And I will give him a booming blade attack. Well, let's see if it lands first because I've done so well the last few times I rolled an attack. 14's miss, right? Yes. 15's your target number. Yeah. Well, that's action. That's movement, and uh, that's Empty bonus pole. action. So that's okay. Action. Yeah, I haven't hit any with his axe yet. Mm -hmm. um, con save again. Five fell. I was gonna say, who's the con save for? Bad guy. Oh, okay. So it's thirteen points of damage. The guy right there is looking really, really rough. He's, uh, all right. You basically can just spit on him. If you hit him, he'll be dead. Well, we got... What, what? Those two didn't well, I, I, I only missed four attacks in a row. Right, I didn't shoot him? He did. Or, no, she took care of this guy down here. You're down to one. I believe Lorena is a 28 now. Oh, she just got kept in place at the 13 or the 16 or whatever. Well, all three attacks will hit. 
lowest I rolled was a 13 with one natural 20 in the bunch. Okay. What's your minimum damage? With the natural 20, that's going to be 22, 26, plus 2 more, plus 2 more. So that's 30, then plus okay. 8, so 38 minimum. Okay. It only had 9 left. Okay. That'd be 40, 48. Okay. Well. 58. Let, let me tell you what's in here now. 67. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. All right. Keep on scrolling. Waiting. All right. Huddled together. Uh, the west end is 10 foot high cave. Our four hunched creatures with spiny backs and sharp claws. Each one of stares at you with a single blinking eye. I threw some more in there because y'all are overpowered. Um, okay. Okay, you don't have to do that because, well, no. 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 You killed them, so. No. Okay. Nothing of. No. It's just a 10 foot area cave now with uh, two Mothic ice statues. Okay, nothing else in here of any value? Not on these Nothics. They're just creatures, aberrations. Oh, strange. Uh, well, this uh, infestation seems to be cleared now, so I guess we can move on. We decided to go towards the exit, did we not? Yeah, I think that's the plan. Well, ah. let's, uh, let's head that Those things are nasty. Yeah. Nasty little creatures. We'll have to remember these creatures, see if we run across them again sometime. Not that I know what name what the name is. The weird spiny what things with a single eye. The, the, Green Cyclopses or some shit. Yeah, it works for me. Alright, so y'all heading out or heading down, heading around? What are y'all doing? Well, uh, somebody said something about there was an exit, so I thought we were going to try to make our way that direction. Yep. Okay. Well, Perrin, is, for some odd reason, has turned to an asshole as of late. Is say let's go. We ain't got time for this. And for what? For exploration. We need to get to the exploration bus, ass, man. They're trying to take care of some sort of uh, hostile. Well, well the biggest hostile is the frost maiden and whatever's going on there. Uh, we well, we killed she's the dead, frost maiden, dude. Yeah, well, you were there for that. You all right? You're not quite yourself today. We'll, we'll, we'll touch base on that later, I think. Let's just go. Okay. Makes it easier so, to touch base when the actual player's here to touch base. Yeah, on. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. As you slide on out, Caves of Hunger. Really? All right. Oh. That's what? Kind of cool. We found a thing. Come out. Right here. 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 Over left. Yeah. Bottom left. Okay. Oh, okay. Do you all see the, basically the picture which you're looking at? The one I is killing people or eating people? Yeah. As you're coming across the eye, or the bridge, you see some of these creatures running around. Um, 
just to give you an idea of what the city looks like, this currently isn't happening because there's actually nobody left alive in this city. But, yeah. Okay. But, uh, we can get everyone on the uh, ice bridge there. Well, everyone being me, you mean? Since I'm the only one that can't be... That doesn't... You know, does it get pulled out by somebody else? Yeah. Okay. So, you have reached the city of Necropolis. Oh, Necropolis. City of what? Necropolis of Yithrin is where you're at. It's kind of a weird looking city. Uh, the tunnel opens into a vast grotto ex enclosed by gleaming ice consigned to this frozen sepulcher of a fantastic city sculpted by ancient magic and illuminated in a haunting way by green and purple lights that shed no warmth. The city is slightly tilted, its spires leaning away from you as though recoiling from your presence. You stand atop a causeway of frost-covered ice that stretches towards the city like the dead, frozen tongue of some hideous behemoth out of whose mouth you have just stepped. You ever seen a place like this before? <laughs> You're asking me? You're the only one that I think would probably answer me. No, I haven't. I can't recall if I've seen anything like this myself either. The, the, it kind of reminds me, yeah, that big spire in the middle, it kind of reminds me of that one thing we went know, into it that like, ship. Like, down, or, you know, me talking about the ship that I was. Yeah, uh, it kind of reminds me of that just by appearance. All pointy and oblong and. I don't know, the possibility. But it's a pretty good sized place. Well, there should be some good shit left over. We can have everything except what she wants, right? Yeah. Do you remember what she wants? I don't. It's in my note. Well, actually, no, she didn't specify what she wanted. There was like one or two things she wanted. And that was it. She was like, I think she told us that, yeah, you'll know what it is when you see it. But Okay, well, I know what it is when y'all see it. Uh, you have a book. So <laughs> I'll have to go back through and see what it was. Uh, actually, I believe one of it was the book that y'all picked up. So, earlier. yeah, she's looking for help to get into some ruins of the this place and find magic items. The ruins are under the glacier. Um, have to be cracked. The waterfall that has to be cracked to get into it, and. That was really it. Yeah. Okay. Just some magic items that they wanted. And uh, it's weird that there's a big giant thing over there. But I say we ransack the place. All right. Where would y'all like to go first? Take everything that ain't nailed down. Well, I mean, somebody is in a rush. So maybe they should lead the way. Oh, okay. I think he's pushing us. So maybe he should lead the way. Yeah, and we're supposed to find every item we can find. Because who knows what item they want. Uh... So yeah, let's just go this way. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go clockwise. How's that sound? Sounds fine to me. All right. Green and purple lights cast an overly glow upon the force draping the silent sea, crawling spires, broken domes, and steeples leaning at the odd angles around the huge citadel. At the foot of the causeway, a giant statue lies prone and motionless, its surface gleaming with the rim. Uh... Okay. Well, that is what you see here. Uh... So, 
to let's see to the left of the entrance yeah the, the little city yeah from what you can see from there uh, a maze of cell line corridors fill this area as you're looking down um, you see these wires that kind of protrude out over the opening with spikes all on it. Um, so you're not quite sure. To the right of you, you see doo -doo 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 -doo. the air around this at, uh, amphitheater is charged with static crack steps descend to the stadium floor. There are tiny glittering objects rest on a pedestal of black stone. Three metal masks rise from the arena like gigantic tridents, each one of them emanating a low hum. The branches of each trident are 25 feet off the ground and extend 50 feet into the air. And Y4 in front of you. Uh... This tower reaches upward like a talon. Its stonework studied, studded in chiseled ruins. A blue light shines from its highest window. Yeah, where y'all want to go? Well, just want to start searching everything and eventually end up in the middle. Find buildings that look like they might be important. Well, I think that one's important, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some other there. stuff floating around in some of these other buildings, well, like whatever that is what over the, there. What kind of response or action do we see oh, shit. from a uh, parent? Uh, he seems determined to move forward, but he's conflicted on where his objective is located. Search it all, we'll probably find it. Yeah. Okay. There's a staff hidden somewhere in here that they need to help free. Free. Oh, shit. Nakella. Who the fuck is that? He's an ancient guardian that was trapped. That's what causes this uh, frozen wasteland to become. So you neglected to inform us of this sooner? I told you this sooner. Did he? <laughs> and the, this is Largo actually looking over at Typhoid going, did he? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think at one point he mentioned something about a staff, but well, you know, I, I already mentioned something about a staff, but I didn't hear anybody mentioning freeing anyone. Uh, no, I think he did mention uh had to do that to free the people, but I thought we freed them by you know killing Aurel. Oh, oh well, you know, sometimes I hear things, sometimes I don't. Oh, whatever. Sure. Let's let's, let's we'll, we'll move forward and find the nice the the well, whatever building we come to. Okay. Well, you got a. Basically, this is sitting on top. The pathway you're on it sits on top, and everything's down below in little coves of sorts. The one on your left happens to have wiring and barbed wiring that goes over the pit probably about five feet in this area. This area is an amphitheater that just has stairs going down. Pit, amphitheater. Uh, if y'all want to give me an insight check. Sure. Nope. I rolled a four. I'm sure that's not going to be anywhere near what I need. I rolled a four. That's 12. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, same here. 
I, I'm done using this well. dice. I'm, I'm done right. using this one. It well, stays there. Uh, you guys are kind of looking over it, and Typhoid, you're more of one to like, ah, I've busted out a joint or two like this before in my past. And you all come to the conclusion that this is probably a prison down here. Oh. Might be some interesting stuff in the prison, but don't know. We could go to the prison or go to the amphitheater looking thing. Well, you got the tower there. Uh, you do see the... Uh, let's come down here. Um, since well, that you know, is protruding the, the, everything. The one part of me wants to just pull head straight to the tower in the middle, but the completionist in me goes, we should check everything. Find yeah. all the hidden collectibles and Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Uh, if you want to search everything, that's fine. Yeah, well, you say the prison or whatever it is looks like it's closer than the uh, other thing? Uh, well, so... you got the prison here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amphitheater here. Yeah. Uh, weird tower with ruins. And then this here, the tall tower... Top of this tower shaped like an axe blade with red light shines out from a slender well, I am window high overhead. The only reason I'd go to the amphitheater is to see what kind of acoustics it had for my music, but we're not here for that. So let's go ahead and check out the prison first. Yeah, and I also see what looks like a small park or forest over there and then a big building and Maybe a dome. Maybe we should tell the dryad about the, the, the glade here. Hey, yeah. Okay. So you guys explore the prison. Yep. All right. So <sighs> actually, you'll need to come through the entrance over here, unless you want to jump over the fence. Uh, you said and, a barbed wire type fence. Yeah, and it's about twenty feet down. Oh so, yeah, yeah, up and over. What's it made of? Okay. I'll walk on the inside. They can be on the outside. You've seen the prison fences in movies, right? Oh, yeah. Constantino wire on top. Yeah. You got something like that coming out over the uh, crevasse or uh, inlay that's about 20 feet down from that. So you come over the fence 10 feet and you hit, technically will end up dropping 30 feet. Or you can go around to the entrance and go down. Your call. I mean, can we cut the fence? Just go through it? Yeah, you can cut the fence. It's still a 20 foot drop. Down to the next section. Down yeah, to the outside. prison itself. Whee! Says the monk who doesn't take any damn damage. I'll catch you guys. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's in a. In a pit. Yeah. That's fine. Um, cut the hole in the fence and uh, feather fall down. Okay. Well, I mean, um, attempt to climb down first. And if I need okay. to use feather fall, I will. Yeah, and I'll be down there to catch you guys if you fall. Uh, tie a rope. Use it. Give okay. it a quick release. Oh, all right. Actually, oh, no, right. I won't give you. I, I uh, apply a rope. Um, Wampus will sit up there with the rope. Mm hmm. And, We've got uh, an immovable rod. We can click up there. Oh, that's what I'll do. I'll tie it to the immovable rod. Okay. And Wampus will sit next to it until everybody gets down. So that everybody has advantage on climbing down. All right. And you're going to need uh, athletics for this, right? Yep. Alright, so that would be a dirty 20 for me. Okay, no problem. And then the other two can climb down, then Wampus will hit the button and uh, retrieve the device and float down on his disc. Okay. On his Yoda disc. I mean, yeah. Okay. You and Perrin have no problem coming down. Actually, no, let me give her... Acrobatics. Let her do acrobatics on that. 
Okay. Yeah. She kind of runs down the wall holding the rope, sort of that, that reverse repelling. Oh, she repel? Yeah. Uh, I think that's what they call it. It's been a while since I've left. Yeah. I had to make, um, worry about it. It's, it's been almost 20 years since I've been out. Damn, I'm old. Been long okay. Enough, been long enough for me. Uh, 24? 25? 25. All right. Uh, and Porticus sits askew in this 40 foot wide, 30 foot tall archway that serves entrance into this. Oh, that's this building here that you're bypassed. Uh, inside here is a maze of cell line corridors, fills this area. Uh, you do notice that each of these doors don't seem to have a locking mechanism on them. Uh, they're made of iron with small barred windows set into them at eye level. Many of these cells contain the frozen bodies of prisoners. What are the prisoners uh, like? Yes. Um, few humanoids are they're all humanoid, but uh, humans. Um, there's a couple of uh, what I'm gonna say. Uh, some tieflings, some dwarves. Uh, you do see a creature that you haven't seen before, kind of elongated head. Um, kind of frail in its framing. Like, it doesn't have a lot of muscle mass, but an elongated skull. Hmm. What Basically what a gift would look like. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Uh, do they look like hardened thugs or more the caster type? Uh, you do have a few that look like the hardened thugs. I mean, you have bodies, some caster right? Yeah, it's just bodies. I mean, how, how long has it been here? I'm sure it's just skeletal. I mean, if they're frozen ice solid, possibly. Oh, okay. okay. I wasn't thinking about the frozen part. I was just thinking about how much time yeah. it's been. Yeah, since they kind of crash into a glacier, if it's anything like those, uh, you know, saber cats or mammoths they're finding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're... Some were frozen before decay kicked in. Some got frozen after decay kicked kicked in so uh, but as you are walking around you do come across uh, a building that doesn't seem to be locked like the others uh, peering through the gap in a collapsed wall you see a 15 foot square infirmary in disarray with the operating table in the middle of the room, leather straps extended from one side of the table into the air above is its surface and fastened to the other side. The shape suggests that something or someone invisible is lashed there on the table. Oh so instead God. of the straps being loose on the table, you see it's forming some kind of shape or holding some kind of shape on that table. Are are you guys seeing something there? I mean, yes and no. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't see anything, but it sh looks like there's something there. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm gonna poke the air, you see if there's poke, any resistance. You don't poke the bear. I mean, poke the air. Yeah. Uh, you do feel something there. Uh, it feels can I, humanoid? Yeah, can I feel the face and body, ears, nose to try and get a idea of race, gender? As you are feeling the head and face for some kind of uh, identification, you're not feeling any actual facial features. 
Medicine you... check, possibly? Sure. No, you've been betraying me all night long. Let's try this. Tell you days. what, I think, I think you can figure this out. If anybody can figure it out, it's it's you. Bardic. D6 or D8? D8, no. Okay. Boop. Okay, hey, Max. Not, not, no. I thought that was a 6. That's a D8. So that is taking that to math. 17 plus 6? 24? 23. 23. Plus six to 23. Oh, okay. Uh, you're realizing it's not any kind of deformity or marking or cutting off of anything. It's just when you're moving your hand around, you can feel like it's malleable to a point. And then when you let go... You feel it kind of smooth back out to the shape it was. Does anybody recognize Largo? Do you recognize what this could be? A malleable, rubbery, blank canvas of a person. Mm, would I? Uh, would I've heard something about it? You know, you know, stories yeah. or something. I mean, where would you? You probably have heard stories. Do a history check for me. No, I ain't got a clue, man. Huh. Uh, pulse? You do feel a uh, faint pulse. It's alive. What? Maybe. It seems. It pulse. Yeah, it got... You can't be. You, you sure? Magic bullshit? <laughs> this is what I'm going to call. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well... I'm gonna, I guess, try and wake him up. Maybe. Hey, Bubba, you alive? Slap, slap, slap on the face. Maybe, uh, yeah. guess we get a little bit of healing on him, maybe? Or are you gonna oh, use your key um, touch and do some of that? See if that'll help. Uh, yeah, I can try that. Uh, but first, slap, slap, slap. Just like, you know, the face, pat, pat. I'm trying to wake okay. up. Fuck. So you see him kind of just pat in the air, because. This character is... Yeah, I'll have it's typhoid. I mean, if it was somebody else, I'd think something of it. Uh, he does not stir. He does not wake. There you go, assuming it's a he. I said they. I not T. Oh. <laughs> just, that's okay. for you, man. And... Huh. I have no idea. Yeah, I can and try. It is a he, so... I can try and do something, and I'll uh, close my eyes and try and wake them, rouse them, physician's touch with my key. I'll spend a key point and physician's touch to, you know, heal slash blinded, deaf, and paralyzed, poison stunned condition. Eh, that's six points of healing. Okay. Um, nope. I have no idea. The magic invisible person thing. Well, let's try to change this um, so we can actually see them. See if we can cast the spell uh, magic on this. Oh, all right. I, I was going to say, yeah. some of y'all have, like, magical dust, don't you? The only dust I got is that dust of drying. Oh. I mean, I thought I saw somebody once, you know, like, make a cloud of pixie dust or something like that with a spell, is what they called it, or something oh, along the about... lines. Hold on. Let me check my repertoire. I know what spell you're talking about, and I don't know if this character has it. <laughs> uh, I think we've seen fairy fire before, but yeah, we have. But like I said, I don't think this character has fairy fire. No, I don't. I don't have fairy fire. Okay. What's on the ground? 
on the ground around the area. Um, just seems like an icy uh, disarray uh, infirmary. You got take some tables knocked over, uh, some yeah. snow that's gone in there. Oh, there you go. I'll uh, grab this uh, big old handfuls of snow and just drop it on the body where the body's supposed to be at. Okay. Well, you drop it on the body. You see some of it kind of spit out, but it does cause some form of where the snow is that you see. Okay, well, there is something there, apparently. And if I can figure that out. Uh, hell, that spell just went on me. I've probably got some other stuff in my bag. Let me take a look. No, that's not going to be useful. That's not going to be useful. That's not going to be useful. No. No. Alright. So... Maybe, but no. Yeah, we don't want to douse them in alcohol. Okay. I need... Yeah, none of that is going to work that I have. Who wants to roll me a d20 plus 5? Um, or... Or do you want me to roll it? I'll do it. Because you see uh, parent go over there. It's what? Nine. Ugh. Do you want to in inspire him or any other magic user want to help him? Sure, I'll give him a bardic inspiration. Okay. Has me add D eight to it. It's thirteen now. Yeah, precisely. Okay. What's he doing? He is trying to spell magic. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Would my party inspiration work on that? I have no idea. I don't think it would. Sure. <laughs> it doesn't say this, you know, for combat wise. It doesn't say increase the uh, spell, whatever. Just maybe spell damage, but not what he's thinking. It, but you can add it for checks, right? I Ability know. checks? I don't think so. Your bardic inspiration? Let me check. Yeah, because. Okay. Uh, abil yeah, ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. But mine will allow it to go even further. And he can add. You can add it to AC. Damage. Uh, yeah, and weapon damage. Okay. And you roll a four on your bardic. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and roll the D twenty. This makes it a nineteen. Because <laughs> you can just be sitting here all day. Uh, as the magic finally breaks. Uh, you see something like this laying on the table. Uh huh. Huh. Well, that's a thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, this weird creature here, it's, uh, uh, poke. Yeah. Yeah, it still feels the same. He's still, but he's still alive. How's that? Uh, and you see uh, his neck kind of moving. Wake up. Oh, shit. And he's trying to break over the edge. And you see his Hi skin there. change into a middle aged man with shallow complexion, one blue eye, one green eye, and streaks of silver in his long, jet black hair. Yeah, uh, huh. there's there was no need to do that. Uh, We've already seen what you look like. Uh, you're not the usual doctor. How long have you been here? Uh, 
they brought me in a few weeks ago. Let me rephrase that. What did it what look like? It? Oh, this was uh, hold, hold. Another what? question: hold. How long do you you live? What was the number of the year that it started with? What did the scientists look like? What was their birthday? What was their favorite color? What was the weather uh, outside? A, it wasn't cold, but the year was 11... Uh, basically, it would translate to 306, negative 362 uh, DR. But Nestor had its own calendar, which was 11,000 something at that time. Okay, so first of all, you said it wasn't cold. No. And you think it's only been a few days. Yes. Well, it's been cold here for quite a while. You're in a glacier. Um, glacier? Yeah, you know, solid thing of ice. How is a flying city in a glacier? That's a very You're good question. You're not flying anymore. Yeah, it's not flying. Uh, and by the uh, way, you're the only survivor thus far that we found. Uh, what year is it? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, 1492. I don't, I don't know, it's like 14 something, Dale Reckoning? 1492 yeah. something or other, yeah. Because yeah, I make jokes about yeah. the searchers for Columbus and things. Yeah. Uh, Day of Reckoning? What? Dale Reckoning is what we call it. The, Dale uh, the, Yeah. Yeah, what, what the hell is that? That's how the, we do our years. I mean, how do you do yours? Yeah, roughly the year you're talking about was like 1700 ish and change years ago so uh -huh. i'm assuming some bullshit magic had you unconscious Is that that? if y'all like to do an arcana check yeah i that. have no idea uh that is nothing not that's gonna do me any good but I'll, I'll try i'm my character would not understand he just thinks it's bullshit magic maybe seven seven uh yeah y'all are pretty certain it's some bullshit magic but for the players to know it was sequester sure uh basically this uh willing creature or an object can be hidden away safe from protection uh when you cast this on the target it becomes invisible can't be targeted by divination time ceases to flow for it and does not grow older what's well, um Interesting. So, why are you strapped down? Uh, uh, good question. I say it wasn't a very hard question. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, they were doing some experiments on me. Um, oh, what was that wizard's name? Durkan, Dursan... Uh, Dazan? Yeah! That asshole. He was doing experiments on me. Yeah, we met a simulacrum of him, uh, what was it, like a month ago? Oh, and there was some was white, so, like, you know, what that white undead thing was with him, and then we met this weird little wisp that wanted revenge on him named Zeriel, I think was his name. Zeriel's his sidekick. No, he was about a ball this big, and it was like a, a, a will-o'-wisp. Yeah, a little white will-o'-wisp ball about yay big. Yeah, well, there you uh, did. Remember, you're so, like apparently 1,700 years in, from the past. As you see, he kind of raises his hand. Like, he was... Uh, kind of taller, trying to do the whole height thing, but his arms are still strapped down. What's your name? 
My name oh. is uh, Slim Shady? not Surge. <laughs> I almost said Surge. Uh, Typhoid. Amongst companions. I'm Zero Fong. So, again, you were just here because they were doing tests on you? Yeah. They were doing experiments, uh, trying to figure out my genetics, see if they could uh, simulate it, replicate it. And nothing else. I don't know. I've been laying here. Uh, and I've like apparently to... been laying here for 1,800 years or some shit. Yeah, I'd like to insight check that it was just tests and nothing else. Okay. Not you. You've been betraying me all night long. Fuck. Twa, no. 14. Okay. He seems to be truthful. Ah, okay. But yeah, I mean, apparently in this, what looks like a prison, yeah. everything else is frozen and dead, except you. Uh, okay. On our way here, we saw a couple of weird little creatures. Like, uh, and I'll describe the Nothic. If Does that ring any bells? You explain what? I describe what a Nothic looks like. To see if that rings any bells to him. Oh, those are some nasty looking creatures. Uh, yeah, they're basically the... Kind of pets or dogs hunting pets for these damn red wizards. But... Yeah, they've been doing magical experiments on... Prisoners such as myself. Huh. Uh, well, if we were to free you, would you show us around the city that is now stuck under a mountain of ice? Uh, yeah. Once we're done here, we could always just help lead you back out to the surface. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, do you got some extra clothes for me? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it's a little chilly down here. I, And I'll, you know, hand him my clothing. Uh, okay. He adjusts his height and weight to fit your regular clothes. Cool. Does he really need to? I mean, his... He's pretty high, pretty tall. Yeah, but the his normal body's not as bulky as you would think. Is. Oh, okay. Are he bulky? Yeah. At all? Yeah. Yeah. So Ish. instead of it looking like uh, an extra large, he kind of made the elf grow out the alpha to be like a medium. So. Yeah, tall, athletic, not super strong outside of werebear form yeah. but not weak by any means yeah uh so it's let him out he gets dressed and he asks so what happened to uh Arothus Arothus who Irothus. He was the lich that ran this city. Oh, a lich. Hmm. Uh, I don't question. know. Uh, I mean... Maybe he's still around somewhere? Uh, we have, like I said, we just... You're the only one we found so far. When we start further we can go in. Yeah. Okay. We were sent here to search the ruins for magic items and... You know... Okay. Well, he was obsessed with relics and magic items from the ancient past, which I guess is really far back for you. Cause yeah, I'm confused on how this. How am I still alive? Some spell magic bullshit. 
Uh, yeah, well, we couldn't quite figure it out, but it's some sort of magic bullshit. Okay. Yeah, from uh, what we've learned, and I'm going to skim through some of these books I got, we found some of these books, if they make any sense, and I'm just okay. going to show them some of the books we got. I don't think any of them really have much of interest in them, but... All right. Uh, well, he does speak Loros. If were any of those in Loros? Uh, none of them were. One was in Elvish, I think, but not okay. Ancient Elvish. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. So, oops. You have Xerophon with you. We've got a guide. Yes. Uh, so where are y'all trying to head to? Uh, well, since we're here to kind of... We were sent to get a couple of important things for some lady, and we, we were told we could keep what she didn't want because she only wanted one or two things, and I figured... So where do they keep the most thing. important, uh, you know, treasures, I guess you could say? Yeah, because there's like a... Out and then make our way towards the center of the, this place and find out if we can find the information of what it is, where it's at, and why it fell here. Okay. Yeah, with, with there being a park and a couple big buildings and a giant fucking dome over there in the other area. Well, probably the high-end stuff is, would be in the main tower, but um, all the wizards the eight wizards that ran the city underneath uh Icolaris had their own little tower so we could probably hit those they may have something in there all right that sounds fair okay so uh, you've been i guess preoccupied in whatever you were doing for a long time and I'll if unless anyone objects I'll pull out a good berry on steroids okay anyone object no 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 there hey chow sounds like damn this is delicious where did this come from oh there's a I keep wanting to say dry, a dryad that was trying to keep us in a grove, but we were able to talk our way out. Yeah, fake creatures tend to do things like that. Okay. Well, the closest tower would probably be the Tower of Aberration. And he points up to the prison to this one here. All right. But we do have three over on that side, which you see what? here. Yeah. You went down. I can't get okay. back up. Right. Right back. Yep. Yep. Take care of it. Yep. Do what you do. Well, it appears we got one, two, three, four right there in that row. Maybe this one over here is another tower. I, I'm kind of interested to see what might be in this dome. I mean, it looks like an important place to go. Usually, it's something set up like this, that main tower is more likely a mage's tower, like the the grand yeah. wizard, whatever mage. Yeah. Mark, Mark mage, the words I was looking for. Yeah. And just looking around, I mean, that that might be a tower, one of the towers. That might be possibly behind there, that's one with the red. Who knows what's in here? We're just running around with some dude who was strapped down to a table and left to rot for centuries, years, yeah, doppelganger millennia. Yeah, millennia. Yeah, there's a doppelganger on top of that. Yeah, so it's like, oh, you were in jail, and you just decided to look like that person in particular? Why? My question would be, why...
Why, I guess. Yeah. Why they let him live. I mean, they kind of just put him under a spell that was just going to leave him incapacitated in his own thoughts for who knows how long. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. They, they left him alive. Yeah. Instead of killing they, him. Well, instead of using that spell on somebody, it might have been important. I'm thinking right. that he may Wait, have I'll decide on towers. Let's go on break. It's going to be a few more minutes. All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a few minutes while he'll... He takes care of what he needs to take care of, so don't go too far.
<sighs> and we're back. Crisis averted. Yes. Found ourselves a new friend, and we're, I guess, going to try to figure out where we're going to go to next. Well, he <laughs> pointed out a couple of towers this way, or we could go back to this one. Or I'm assuming this one as well. Yeah. Now, now all the towers, you know, in my general assessment, usually oh, house so like, casters. Are they, what these towers are, like, you know, mage towers and such? Uh, yes. Um... Well, let's get over here. I didn't bring my glasses with me. Uh, I mean, yes. You're a dumb the, Can't you just like adjust your eyes to make it work? Yeah. Uh, the city was governed by eight arcanists. Each of these towers uh, is their holding. Um Matter of fact, their names and faces are mortalized in the city's museum because they're narcissistic and yeah. Well, tell us how you really feel. Well, when you get strapped down for apparently millennia or two. Well, I mean, they could have strapped it down and then. You know, the next day, everything that's now caused it to be here could have happened. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, do I? Just shooting in the wind. Okay. But I will say that from looking around, this city's gone to shit. Apparently, it's been a while since, um, you know, all that. Well, it was an obligation, and every mage had to be taught press dissertation to ensure that the city stayed clean at all times. Well, I think we missed that. Yeah, don't think anyone's been on duty for a while, apparently. That would probably be a good assessment. Yeah. Let's go check so, out that first tower, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Do we want to go to this one or this one? Let's go to the one that we were going to go to afterwards anyway. All right. And then we can, you know, traverse and whatever circle. Maybe we can check out that dome, too, while we're at it. What's, do you know anything about that dome? Yeah. Uh... Dome. You know, the dome, big glass dome, dome with the thing it looks like it's off in the distance there. Yeah, there's like these two domes right next to each other. Okay. Yeah, that is a uh, Monterey. Uh, yeah, it still sounds Greek to me. Yeah. Um, that's where mages would go to conjure one of a kind pets or. Uh, natural habitats or constructs. Uh, it's kind of like a zoo. Yeah, a zoo, a park, all kind of thrown in together. Weird. Think of it like a scenic view inside of you know those glass balls that have these views in it and you kind of shake it. No, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. That was something big that was once. sold a long time ago as little trinkets. Matter of fact, they may have some at the uh, gift shop there. What gift shop? Not like a, yeah. you know, not whatever. It's a I don't city. know your weird ways. This isn't my weird way. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So you're going to, what was it, seven or four? This tower. Uh, we, since we don't see numbers on it, I'm going to say, it's the, <laughs> I guess, this one you went to? Yeah, because you said there's a tower here, a tower here, and a tower here. So we're going to this one. Oh, I didn't know if we were okay. there, in the middle there. Uh, the tower that he is at. This tower is engraved with interlocking circles of stone. Yellow light spills from its topmost window. And the faint sound of brooms brushing on stonework drifts throughout 
it's broken doors. As you peek in, uh, glowing orbs are set into the walls of these, the 30 foot diameter circular chamber. Four giant hands made of shimmering force hover in the center of the room, guarding a tiny ornamental tower perched on a pedestal. Huh. So there's just a tiny little tower in this tower? Mm hmm. Is anyone other than Perrin have to tech magic? Uh, I think Lorena has a wand. Yeah, she does. She gets it on okay. the tech magic. All right. She'll use her wand. Kind of drawback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an aura of conjugation magic is seen throughout. Uh, the tower's interior is ruined, but surprisingly clean, thanks to a permanent unseen servant spells that continuously sweep the floors. Um, it, okay. Uh, as. You notice that the hovering hands seem to be a version of Big Beat's hand spell. Um, that seem to be hovering over this little tower that's on a pedestal in the room. Do you guys go in or? Uh, is that all? Just those weird little hands in a tower? Yep. I mean, we're looking for stuff, so maybe there's more inside. Okay. Well, it is a wizard's tower. I'm sure there is. Uh, well, before we go in, maybe we should get Lorenda to check for some sort of traps and keep the tech magic up on the uh, wand. Sure. Okay. In case there's any magical traps. Uh... She goes through. And this, she's like, there's no trust, but uh, those hands seem to be throwing me off a little bit. What do you mean? They're yeah. living. They're, they're not just for show. So more magic stuff. Yes. All right, more magic bullshit. Copy that. Can I insight check the hands to see if they're doing anything particular? Like, are they... Are they guarding anything or just like hanging out? Give me an insight check. Hey, that was a lot better than I've rolled any time recently, it seems. 23. Uh, you're not quite sure, but as you kind of put your head in a little to look around, you do see them shift into a fist and kind of point towards your direction. And you pop your head back out. I don't think those hands want us in there. What did they tell you they didn't? They kind of turned into clenched fists as I poked my head in, and they seemed to turn towards me, if that makes any sense. Okay, so some sort of uh, security system. Yeah. And are, are they in the same room with the tiny tower? Yes. They seem to be in the circular room with for corners of a circular room. No idea they, what to do. They're initially pointed towards the pedestal where the tower is, but once you poke your head in, they kind of shift towards the entrance. Okay. 
Uh, do we want to deal with the tiny tower at all? There does appear to be is some it glowing. Yes, the tower does seem to be magical. I mean, sure, why not? I guess I'll take the first step in. Nope, wait a minute. If we Four. Do, I will. Uh, I think I'll just cast invisibility on you. All right. So yeah, you let me mark that spell slot. Invisibility is a second level spell. So I'll second. click invisibility mm. on you. That way you can tell, see if they're uh, attracted to your entrance, whether you're invisible or not. Yeah, that'll help on that end. If I have to attack, will that break the invisibility on me, or will it, it only will, break if you will. attack? Okay. No, it's if you attack. So this is more of testing the theory if they can sense me, or if they can only see me. Yeah, if it ends up being an issue, we can go in there and start trying to deal with them. So I will invisibly step into the room. Okay. And do they sense me? Or As see you me? Step in the room. They do turn and you see fist, three fists compounding to the right of you, left of you, and top of you. And uh, I assume a twenty-one hits you. Yes. Okay. If they can then, see me, which I was hoping they couldn't. <laughs> well they get attacked with disadvantage if they Yeah. The first roll was a twenty six fifteen, second roll was a twenty seven twelve, third roll was a twenty eight thirteen. Last one rolled a 29 and a 21. So one of those would hit me because my AC is a 21. Yeah. Yeah. So I said three hit above and to your side. Gotcha. Yeah, one. gotcha. Went for the middle. Um, that took you 24 points of force damage. Ow. That's one nasty hit. Well, I guess we're rolling. Um, and give me a strength check. Strength. Yeah. Okay, just strength check. Do you want us to roll initiative? Uh, yeah, you'll be rolling initiative. I have been rolling dog shit all night. That is only a 13. Oh, okay. Check uh, or save? Uh, check, because it's kind of okay. opposing. Okay. So you get pushed back out of the room, and the fist that hits you kind of rotates and flips up its middle finger at you. Alrighty. Oh, I need to bring these guys out. So, one, two, three, four. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Oops. Okay. Oh, I need to click on these guys. Make sure they're in the niche. So we know they either have true sight or blind sight or tremor sense. Yeah, probably a tremor sense. A giant hand floating at maybe blind sight? Yeah, because okay. tremor sense would be on the ground. I don't know why I was thinking. I mean, they could have true sight, but that'd be a little much. They could just set to attack anything that crosses the, yeah, through the but door. Even, but even the, the site was thought to be an issue. Right, well, that's well, why well, I mean, They, did they had disadvantage. So it yeah. couldn't have been any kind yeah. of site. Yeah, they just knew where I was at. Sort of. Yeah. Well, you said you just stepped in. So. 
Okay. Hmm. All right. Actually, we'll see. Let's see if I can bring this up to a better battle map. Um. Hmm. Okay. Now we'll go here. Ignore anything that you may have seen on here. Of course, y'all didn't go there anyways. But uh, place yourselves here. Dead center? Yeah. Well, remember, you just messed up our... Uh... Mess. Our initial rolls. Yeah. Oh, did I? Well, you might yeah, changing maps them. changed that. If you had, didn't clear it, you'd be able to see it. We won't. Okay, yeah. I didn't clear it. Okay, um, just tell us when. All right, so we have Largo. Um, yeah, well, I was here, but I don't see me now. Unless I'm that little bitty thing. Okay. Where do we start at? Uh, I would be kind of like through the doorway since they attacked. Yeah. Well, they pushed me back out of the doorway. Or is yeah. that the actual doorway? Yeah, I'm just going to put myself there like that's out of the doorway. Yeah. That's the one that hit you. That one was a little high. This was off to the left. And this was to the right. Um... Oh, Lorena. Put her over here. Okay. So, Largo, you're up. Do you see four stonish living big speed scans type deal? All right. Uh, one, and one of them actually landed a blow. So, uh,. I will come in. Is there no way to flank it, is there? Uh, no, because they're kind of standing in the doorway now. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll step up as close as I can. What, is this one that hit? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to swing my axe with him and hit with a green flame. Well, I'll try to hit with a green flame blade. Okay. Jeez, please. All right. Does a 15 hit? No, it does not. It does not. Oh, well, this fucking sucks. Uh, yeah. But yeah, these. Give well, they me used to be the one that's right next to me. Give me, give it, a, give me a strength save for it. Fifteen. Twenty-six. Gigs. Yeah. Okay. I'm shrug. That's all I got right now. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me. What does he have? I forgot about your buddy. What does he have? My buddy. Uh, the doppelganger. Oh. Because he is with you. That's a niche. Actually, goes right after you. Uh, um, Uh, okay. He polymorphs into a... Oh, it's an action. Never mind. All right. He kind of... 
Uh, basically for Stretch Armstrong type view comes up in double slams the Jimmy Jigger. So and he steps back shaking his hands like damn that hurts. Baron comes in um really hate for him to burn all his spells. Okay, these are constructs. Uh, could they be the spell? No. Um, uh, he's going to go ahead and just cast Bless. Now, Lorena, curse. No, no, no. Okay. She fires and misses twice. You got these hands just banging all around you. Oh. Okay, well. You have a hand banging all around you. The others haven't gone up yet. Sorry. Okay. Your turn, Typhoon? Okay. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do three attacks and Floria blows to heal myself a little bit. Uh, okay. First attack is at advantage because I am currently invisible. Mm. Uh, was I part of the bless? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, that should hit. That's 20 plus 8 for a total of 28. Dirty 20 plus 8. Second attack. Oh, wait. Let me, yeah, I'll just do this. 20 is your target number. Okay. Both of those will hit because it's a, another 16 and 18, then the blesses don't matter. But yeah, they would both increase it enough. So no natural 20s, but they all hit those three attacks. Mm -hmm. And I'll okay. hit myself real quick. Ooh, max okay. healing. All right. And now I will give you the damage. So this is going to be the one directly in front of my character in this yes. current position. 39 points of total damage. Okay. Um, That's yeah. the one that had its finger flipping you off and you just snap. <laughs> snap that finger right in half and it went from a big ass hand to crippling you know Someone who has severe arthritis. That is my turn. Yes. Okay. That's my turn. 
Uh, he's gone. He missed. He missed. He missed. Largo, you're up. Yay. Um, I'll try it again. I don't think I can think of doing Okay. Taking this axe and swing it again for, uh, well, they've still not moved where I can get around them. Uh, no, they're kind of blocking the way. Alright, well, uh, the one that he's already dealt with, mm -hmm. and then the one right next to me, this in front of me. Fifteen? <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, okay. I'll try to push the one next to me again. Okay. Uh, 16? Yeah, he just barely made it. Yeah, right, right now, Largo is feeling pretty crappy. I mean, literally, every roll I've done so far has just missed. That's it. I'm, there's nothing else I can do. Okay. Uh, unless there's a way to move around the room to get past them. But I don't think there is. Well, this one, the ones in front, actually gets popped by the doppelganger. Not by much, but enough. Hey, it's better than nothing. Yeah. So it's hanging on by a sliver. You do see one that's standing up, that's floating above it. So pretty much once that one's gone, you can squeeze through. If you're... Want to wait around another round? Because I'm pretty sure. Let's see if this. All right. Deck save. Hey, hey. So. All right. Your passageway is clear. Okay. No, I can't do nothing until my turn again anyway. Uh, Marina is... That's what I'm going to do. Going to Oh, she crits with the rifle. Oh, that's three D eight, that's twenty four starting. Yeah. Then plus the modifier. So that's twenty four. Okay, hold on. 3d8 is 24. Her sneak attack is... What? What's her sneak attack? Because they are engaged with you. So yeah, depending on how many d6s she has. 3d6, so that's 18. 18, 24, 34, 42, uh, 42 points, and yeah. Base, then plus the modifier for her. Okay. All right. That one's dead. Typhoid, you got one that's floating up above you and one to the right of you. Mm. I had blessed, didn't I? Yes, yes, you did. Sorry, I forgot about it. Would one more point of on the attack work? 16? No. Okay. They have an armor class of 20. So game is oh. still um, fine. Okay. I, just thought, I just remembered it and wanted to check. Uh, I'm going to move, trying to stay in 
position with the other two. Okay. Oh, and he's just too far away to get flanking, so... Um, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing as last time, and... Three attacks, heal myself. Okay. And no, no, no. Two fours and a two. But I will heal myself. Okay. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Parents not even actually in the room yet. They can oh, pop in over behind you. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So that is five plus four is nine. Yeah, you're kind of blocked in the doorway. Gotcha. Hand. Yep. So I will just, yeah, stay here. I hold two fours and a fucking two. So no matter what, that doesn't matter. The highest I could get would be 12 plus 4 is 18. No, 16. Okay. And I'm not uh, ready to spend keep that many key points to try and boost it up enough. No. Give me a deck saving throw. Me? Yes. Can do. 15 plus 8. Okay. 23. Uh, Fist comes out and tries to grapple you, but you did make the dexterity saving throw to not be grappled. But you do take 2d6 plus 8 damage. On the grapple? I I have evasion. Okay, so... That'd be none. None. Okay. I mean, if it's still a hit... Well, basically, I have to do an attack roll to see if I can grapple you. Oh, gotcha. And I, I avoided do. the grapple, so. Yeah. So. I gotcha. It's kind of a. But you go. Yeah. What was that again? It's a what? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and that's uh, and that's that's proper terminology on that. Mm-hmm. Okay, just checking. And okay, so that's what happened. First fist comes down to try to grapple you as the second fist comes in and punches itself. Oh. Punches the other one. That one takes. Yeah, show me how many points it takes. Ooh. 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 Yeah, I didn't like the amount of damage I took. <laughs> That hand took 25 points of damage. Yeah, it was like, it hit me once. How much? Uh-oh. <laughs> and there's four of them. Mm-hmm. But they don't have very much hit points. They got a high AC. Yeah. Um... So that's them. I think uh, Largo, I think you're up. Yeah, Largo, you're up. Yep, so I can move into melee now. Yes. But, I mean, flanking. Okay. Well, maybe with advantage I'll have a freaking chance. Plus the D4. Yeah, I remember to pick it up this time. All right, so it's going to be a 19 plus 3 plus... That, that hits. Six. So, yeah, it's a 20, 30, 29. 29, mm, all right. Okay. Um, I didn't say Booming Blade or Green Flame, so I'll just go ahead and leave it. Well, green. she says which one you want. Okay. So it's gonna be a D. Damn it! Quit. Wait. No, oh, I have to line it up. Right, D12 plus 2D8. Really? They're all twos. Okay. Two, four, six. That's eight points of damage. And if it moves on its own accord, that'll be a 3d8. Okay. Um, I don't see a need to do anything else. Uh, 
So, that actually I will I'll inspire um, Typhoid. Hey, I'll take it. Come on, man. I know you're better than that. Some strange magic item fist in you. I'm not liking it. I don't like it. You don't like it? 23 and 26. Nat. Two. Uh, this is the doppelganger came in. Then. Oh, okay. Swooped it around. So. Nice. Well, since he wasn't given any weapons, he's just punching it with his hands. Oh, hell, uh, he had a weapon. <laughs> so that is seven uh, him, um, and eight bludgeting. He can have Good the cap. he can have the ice long sword right now. And which will add was that two d four sixteen frost damage twenty four. We'll make sure to give him something next time. <laughs> well, I mean, I got two swords that I'm not using. Yeah, and I was contemplating getting a hold of your Dragon Slayer just in case we run into something. Okay, you can have it. Yeah, I'd infuse it with key and then just have it in case we run into a dragon. Okay. That's uh, him. He's going to come in, come around. How badly do you look? On a scale of 1 to 10? Sure. Eight. Okay. I have roughly a hundred hit points. <laughs> okay. Total. That's why I went scale one to ten. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine. Okay. So he will do. Sacred flame worked last time, so let's try this. Okay. They have a high dex, but they suck at dodging. Okay. That's 17 points to that. All right. Lorena comes in. Doing Lorena things. Mm-hmm. Does have less, so both of those will hit. Uh, 23, uh, 33, 42. Hike, hike. Okay. See, that wasn't so bad. Walk in the door, four of them come at me, one of them hits out of the four, and I take 25 points of damage. Yeah, not bad at all. Quarter of my health, gone. Are you saying I should have rolled with bands on the other guys? Uh, all right. Well, now standing before you, let's move you back to the map you were at. Uh, before we touch anything, I'm not gonna I touch think... It. I'm Catching our breath might be a good idea. Well, like you got ten minutes to catch your breath, well, at least. What? Why ten? Because I'm gonna take ten minutes to ritually cast identify on this tower. Oh, thing oh, yeah, at. yeah. I was thinking, you know, a short rest might not be too bad of an idea. We well, do short rest. Okay. All right. Um. Oh, that's the lore. So I'm wanting. So, uh, an hour and ten minutes sitting around. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll identify the tower to get some sort of idea what kind of magical properties it currently has, and I'll spend an hour reading my book. Yeah, and I was thinking, find out what it's all about next week. Yep. Yep. Since it is about is that time. That it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening on our fine adventure. And there's that. Um, check back with us Sunday for some Waterdeep. 
Wednesday for some more Fires of Raw to organize play. And we'll be back here Friday. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to pull ourselves out of whatever's going on and figure out what's going on with this tower. So don't forget, we're in this adventure called Life Together, so please keep that golden rule in mind. Treat those around you the way you'd like to be treated yourself. And with that, have a good week. Take care.